Welcome. Are you brothers competitive? We are, we are. Who's the youngest? Yeah. Oh, how many years? 18 years. Seriously? Seriously. We're the only two children in the family. When There's my... a big gap there, 18 years. When I was 18, yes. my mother told me she was pregnant, and I said, don't be so stupid. I mean, the thought of one's parents still doing it yeah, is appalling. <laughs> <laughs> now, tonight is not a rehearsal. Yeah, I want a best performance. It means like you want to, yes? Yes. I know you're not professional chefs, that's clear. But what you are is hungry for success, right? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. This is not a Bush Tucker trial, yes? No, no. This is real. Meet tonight's family brigade, the Bigginses. Head of the family, Christopher, <laughs> grew up dreaming of becoming a chef. Tonight, we'll see if he's made the right career choice. Ah! What's the matter? We're burning the onions. He's drawn by partner Neil, a high-flying trolley dolly, and a confident cook. Chris's brother, Sean, who works in HR, has recruited wife Louise for backup. As a childminder, I'm hoping she can keep Biggins in check. And this prima donna will have to cut back on the theatrics if his family are to stand any chance of pleasing 50 hungry diners who expect nothing but the best. They'll be cooking pea, mint and lettuce soup with parma ham. I'm you're excited, like... chef! Yeah, yeah, you're excited, I'm <laughs> shitting myself! Smoked paprika chicken stroganoff with spatzily. You're delusional! I'm not delusional. You're on drugs! And vanilla cheesecake with berry compote. Well done, except Biggins. Fresh pea soup, perfect this time of year. Right, pan of water on. Don't put the peas in unless the water's boiling. We'll lose the colour. Oh, we want that nice, colour. bright, vibrant green colour right. of the peas. Mint in, peas in. Now, every time we put something in, we add a touch of salt. I'd rather season small amounts as we go along, rather than one big clump at the end. So you're looking at that very salty, minty flavour. Nicely seasoned, that's right. Yeah. But not over salted. But not over salted, exactly that. As it comes up to the bowl, lettuce is going to go in. Then we'll take them off and drain them. Those cooking juices, yeah, we want. Just like you've made a really nice, fresh pea stock. Into the blender, creme fraiche in there, just a touch of stock. And then lid on, please be careful this, yeah? I don't want it all over the fucking ceiling. More importantly, <laughs> I don't want it over you. <laughs> Let it gain momentum. Once it starts to break down, pour more of your stock back in there. Right. Puree, puree, puree. And the reason why we puree it so hot, it gets a lot finer. If we have to leave it to cool down a little bit, it goes a little bit lumpy and grainy. We'll go back into the pan. We'll bring it back up to the boil. So we're serving the soup piping hot. Soup in, nice, thick, rich consistency. A little bit of parma ham. A little taste. Uh, mm, nice. Delicious. So, simple. Right, no. any questions? No. Are we ready? <laughs> yes, 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 Chef. Right, guys, the Biggins Brigade, yes? yes On order, chef. four cups table three, four soup, four chicken, four cheesecake. That was as silent as a fucking grave. All right. I, I'll call that out again. On order, four covers table three, yes. Four soup, four chicken, four cheesecake. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, my God. Oh, God, that was awesome. <laughs> Look, <laughs> I hope we all remember to wash our hands. <laughs> First rule of the kitchen. Did you wash your hands in the jungle when you were eating kangaroo's penis, though? <laughs> <laughs> or, did, or didn't that matter? Uh, that didn't matter. All right. Biggins. Yes, sir. You've been in 15 minutes, you've already started talking about cock. <laughs> <laughs> Neil. I'm excited, always... chef. Yeah, yeah, you're excited, I'm <laughs> shitting myself. So, shall I put the lettuce in now, yeah. chef? As it yeah, boils, lettuce, lettuce in. Is it four portions of these? Oh. Fuck it, put that in. OK, guys, go, please. Yes, table six. <laughs> Right, it's a difficult day for Janet Street Porter. For the past three and a half months, Janet Street Porter has embarked on the biggest challenge of her life, hand-rearing two veal calves, David and Elton, in a back garden in North Yorkshire. Yeah, off you go. Oh, come and sleep, Walter. No, no. Ah, stop gumming me! Oh, shit! Janet's aim was not only to rear delicious meat for the F-Word restaurant, but also to persuade the British public that we should all be eating homegrown British rosé veal. But her campaign has also taken her on an amazing journey. You look fantastic, you do. What do you want? She's nurtured her calves through rain and shine, and with her care and attention, they've grown to five times the original size. Now they're at a good weight for slaughter, it's time for Janet to cut the apron strings. Today is Janet's last day of motherhood. At 20 weeks old, it's time for the calves to leave the comfort of Janet's back garden and meet their fate. Yes. 
Come on. Janet's been prepared from the beginning for this day, but how will she cope when she has to say goodbye? You just want to lick everything, uh, don't you? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, God, they don't know they're on death row, do they? <laughs> Obviously, it's a sad day. I actually don't want to see them being slaughtered. I would find that very difficult. You know, I don't have to prove I'm macho. I'm not as macho as Gordon. Janet knows the slaughter will be carried out in strict accordance with EC and meat hygiene service guidelines, but she's come to the abattoir to see what that means for herself. Hello, fellas. Hi there. Elvis and David. No, David and Elton. Before David and Elton are slaughtered, Janet wants to see how the process works. Having cared for them for so long, she wants to be sure their death will be as humane and respectful as possible. Licensed slaughterman Martin McIntyre walks Janet through the short final journey the calves will make. They normally come up this alleyway. Mm hmm And your calves will go up there. Yeah. But we don't. Yeah. We follow up here. OK. Then we shoot them with a the humane killer, stun gun. So the shooting's not killing them? No, it's a stun. OK. Yeah. So they're actually killed by slitting their throat? Yeah. I just don't want to watch you shooting them. Or slitting their throat, unfortunately. I just don't think I could. Right. Good. Right. This one, yeah. Will Janet be a supportive mother to David and Elton right up to the bitter end? Maybe been married twice, right? Yes. Yeah, first time to a lady. To a lady, yes. And then Neil. And then Neil, yes. That's fascinating. How old were you got married for the first uh, time? 22. Really? So young? Yeah. Mm. You know, in those early days, one thought it was the right thing to do yes. was to get married, you know. And so... Uh, and she didn't mind things. that you were gay at the time of the wedding? No, she didn't know. I didn't know myself. Oh, you didn't know? No. There you go. Look at the colour of that. Lovely. Gorgeous. Right, that's enough. Good. Nice. Neil, look at the mess. Sean. Oh, shit. Unbelievable. Up you work in shit, you cook like shit. <laughs> huh? But the food tastes great, <laughs> chef. Fucking hell. Table seven, Louise, you got the last two. Last two, yeah. Service, last table. Go. I think the pea and ham soup worked really, really well. Um, you get the real flavour of the peas up front, and then I think the mint in it kind of comes in slightly afterwards. Um, great texture, very, very soft, almost like a velita. It's great. Do you enjoy your soup? It was gorgeous. How was yours, my darling? Not so good. No, oh, damn. What happened? It was really thick. Really thick? Just a bit too thick. As it gets cold, it thickens. Yeah. Damn. It was quite <laughs> thick. <laughs> it tasted quite yeah. nice. The flavour was yeah. nice. Yeah. Damn, it sounds like you've had the one made by Biggins. Yeah, he is yeah. quite thick. <laughs> yeah. Right, results. Let's find out how you did. The number of customers are paying for the soup is... 40 out of 50, well yes! done! Now, the 10 that didn't pay, reasons being, please? Uh, bad consistency. What else? The um, lack of mint flavour. Lack of mint? Yes. Lack of mint. Somebody complained about mint. I want you guys, yeah, leaving at the end of here with 50 out of 50 paying for the main course. Yes, yes. And 50 uh, out of 50 paying for the dessert, yes? Coming up, I meet a zookeeper who couldn't give a monkeys about healthy eating. Here you are. Yes, not looking after yourself. The grillers are getting baby gym lettuce. We've got Michelin starred monkeys. And oyster lover Rob Bryden gets stuck in. 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 Twist. And twist. Up. Welcome back to the F word. Time for the main course chicken stroganoff. Normally done with beef, but I'm gonna do it with chicken. This is a really nice, light, healthy approach to stroganoff and so simple to do. Chicken breast, slice, smoked paprika. It gives it a really nice oak smoky flavour. Salt, pepper. Rub across the chicken. Hot pan, olive oil. 
The most important part now is just lightly sauteing the chicken and giving it a little bit of colour. Rest. Vegetables, onions, peppers, garlic. Mushrooms. The secret here is we're sauteing the vegetables off in the same pan as the chicken, gently infusing the vegetables. White wine. Reduce. Chicken stock. Sour cream. Chicken. Sugar snap peas. Parsley. Rest. And to finish it off is this little baby here. Spetzle, basically the German's pasta. It's light, it's fluffy, but more importantly, it's got to be crispy. Season. Hot pan, olive oil. As it hits the pan, it puffs up. It gets nice and light. Butter. Stroganoff. That has to be the perfect stroganoff. Smoked paprika chicken stroganoff with spetzeli. Done. Look at that chicken, it's fucking black. Which one? That one there. Oh, dear. Ah! What's the matter? We're burning the onion. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, Ow. would you serve that? No, no way. Would you serve that? No. No, bullshit. Uh, come on, guys. Very nice, Sean. Thank Make you, sure chef. they're all even, yes? Thank you, Chef. Yeah, good. There you go. We've got the heat back it's in the pan now. It's getting off me yes? well. Uh, <laughs> chef. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Right, now we've got the heat back in the pan, OK? Right. We start losing the heat, we'll boil the chicken. We'll boil the chicken, there's no flavour. Right, next on the menu, a bit of monkey business. I've come to the London Zoo to meet Hannah to tell her to stop monkeying around when it comes to her diet. Hannah has worked here as zookeeper and animal nutritionist for the past four years. My job here is mostly to look after the, um, the primates, so all the monkeys and the apes. Good morning. <laughs> yes. Each day, Hannah prepares peanuts and mealworms for the squirrel monkeys. The chimps get fresh papaya. The marmosets, banana. And Bobby, the silverback griller, enjoys a sumptuous spread of seeds, fennel and curly kale. Like most of her charges, Hannah doesn't eat meat, but she's not looking after herself half as well as the monkeys, and it's beginning to show. I've recently um, got a gluten and dairy intolerance. So every day at work, I basically have the same thing. Um, it's either gluten-free pasta with pesto or uh, a baked potato. Pasta and baked potatoes every day? Hannah's clearly not getting enough variety in her restricted diet. And I think her main problem is lack of protein. Hannah, good morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's like a blown-up version of anti Roll Thompson there. <laughs> the diet is crucial. Yes, yes, absolutely. Vegetable intake, vitamin C, you know, protein. Yep. Yeah. And that balance is the most important part. Yeah, absolutely. When was the last time you sat down to a really good piece of meat? Uh, a good, a good three, three and a half years ago. Any reason? I think having started at the zoo, you kind of start to get a different outlook on on the on how animals are treated sure. and the sort of meat that you eat. Yeah. Um, I've always been... I was always careful about what meat I ate yep. before. So you would eat meat if it was, you know, yeah. probably uh, reared, organic? Absolutely. So, so just Bobby the silverback griller is a great example of what a healthy, balanced diet can do for you. No, that is absolutely <laughs> incredible. Bobby. There we go. He's having his, he's having his Look, fruit tea now. Fruit tea. I'm surprised he's not Earl Grey. <laughs> It's lunchtime for Bobby and the other animals, so Hannah and I are off to make it. Right, this is our cutting up room. This is like a prep room for a restaurant in here. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. You've got the frizzy lettuce, cabbage, Absolutely. cardamom, lemon peel, allspice. <laughs> this is a joke, isn't it? Avocados. We're serving avocados as well. No, it's good for them. It's very, you know, obviously it's an essential fatty acid. And would you like it turned into a guacamole or would you like We do just... make guacamole, yeah. Oh, you make guacamole from them yeah. as well. And yeah. avocado prawns, avocado crab, or <laughs> spinach, chicory, fricassee, iceberg. Fennel, spinach, broccoli. <laughs> We've got Michelin starred monkeys. <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck. Here you are, yes, not looking after yourself. Uh, the griddles are getting baby gym lettuce. Absolutely. You're spoiling them. I'm not. Well, you I are. Need baby gym, gym lettuce. No wonder there's a fucking shortage for the restaurants. I know Bobby's <laughs> eating them all. <laughs> 
I'm going to cook Hannah a deliciously healthy dish using the same ingredients she feeds Bobby the gourmet griller, with no dairy or gluten. Just to show you that all the stuff you're working with <laughs> down there, yeah. yeah, can be equally as exciting for you. First up, coleslaw. Don't lose any nutrients through cooking. Raw is more. Celeriac, carrots and cabbage are all packed with vitamins and fibre and give the dish a delicious crunch. I love the smoky bitterness of chicory and it's very low in cholesterol. I'm going to make a quick vinaigrette. So, two thirds olive oil, one third sesame seed oil, yeah? A little bit of mustard. Okay. Poppy seeds. Just a tablespoon makes a great contribution to your daily calcium needs. Lemon juice and parsley help the digestion of proteins and fats. They also taste great. And then our uh, vinaigrette. Within three or four minutes, the seasoning is going to start breaking down the coleslaw. And now for my wild card. Hannah's fed up with her unbalanced, boring, gluten-free diet. She may not have eaten meat for three years, but now she thinks she's ready to give it another go. So I'm throwing her in at the deep end with a delicious, protein-rich steak. Um, this is the kind of beef that's reared um, in Ayrshire, yeah? It's fed on grass in the summer, uh, swedes and turnip in the winter. So it's a proper organic beef. When I did eat meat, I would try and eat organic. I don't like the way no. animals are mass-produced. And... No, and I stand strong on that one, nor do I. How do you like your beef? How do you like it cooked? Oh, Medium? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Fine, so we'll cook it medium. remember. <laughs> OK, for the dressing, shallot. I believe that good quality lean meat is a key part of a healthy diet. So I'm hoping this dish will help Hannah back on the road to recovery. Turn over the steaks. A delicious tarragon dressing should make her first fillet steak in years a little easier to deal with. So it's quite a spicy marinade. Tarragon we just cut once. Flat leaf pasta. Give it a stir and add to the steaks. Delicious. All I'm going to do is spoon that over. So as the beef starts to cool down, it absorbs all that amazing flavour. Finally, finish the coleslaw with coriander and it's ready to go. There's yours, medium. <laughs> I can't believe you can put so much different flavours and tastes just into coleslaw. In a coleslaw. <laughs> I haven't quite managed to, uh, to take your... on the beef. You put the most amazing energy into looking after these animals, so you need protein. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? A good bit of salmon, do you think? Mm. Or something salmon like works that. perfectly. Just not quite ready for the, uh, for the red meat. Don't you worry about that. I'll eat it. <laughs> Right, What's the matter? We have quite some complaints over the uh, saltiness in the dishes. Complaints about what? Salt, too much salt. salt. Hey, guys, the dining room are complaining about the seasoning. I haven't done any seasoning. Well, we aren't putting any... I haven't touched salt. A little bit you haven't together. touched salt? No. When you season the spatula, how are you seasoning that? Small amounts? No, nothing at all. Nothing at all? Yeah. No. Nothing, yeah. sure. I, I promise you, nothing. OK, OK, let's go. How about... Sean, make sure it's spotless, yeah? Sure. Yes. <laughs> Biggins, you're eating and the fucking customers aren't. I thought we were finished. No, we're not fucking finished. Come on, guys. We can do this, yeah? Let's go. We can do it, yeah? Yeah, last table, yeah? Come got on. the creme fraiche or the... Uh, come on, come on. ...cream there, baby. Chicken back in. Biggins, mix that in. There, got serving. six there, babe. Yeah. Well done. Got the mushroom. <laughs> Serious, guys. Fuck for Sean and Louise. Sean, yeah, thank you for a fucking good effort. Biggins, you were shit. Halfway through, I told you about the seasoning. Customers complained about it being salty. I saw you clump salt. I, I, was... I swear on my life, I never touched salt in that you thing. You never ever, ever touched... touched salt. If God strike me down dead. Who seasoned the spatula then? I have no idea. I never touched. Seriously, so, if I had put salt in, I would have told you. Okay. I am not a liar. You're delusional. I'm not delusional. You're on drugs. Why are the customers complaining it's salty then? Well, I don't know because it must have been from somewhere, but there was. I put no fucking salt at all in any of that. Yes, yes, you did. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Go see. Close the fucking curtains, will you? Yeah? <laughs> oh, fuck God. Me. 
Rob. Hey, how are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see welcome, you. welcome, welcome. Do you want the food? Yeah, lovely. Yes? And you enjoy wine? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You didn't start actually drinking until you were in your 30s, right? No, I, yeah? I grew up and I never, I never drank, and it's an odd thing, and I don't, yeah, I don't I know why. So that means you must have been stone sober when yeah. you lost your virginity. Yeah, uh, that... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think we were going to get onto this. Um, <laughs> Yes, yes I was, yes I was. <laughs> Any regrets? Yes, no, good God, she's probably Serious. watching. What was it like? <laughs> I hope so. She was one of the best teachers at that school, and I'll tell you what, <laughs> that tribunal <laughs> came down on her too hard. You were at the same school as Catherine Caesar Jones? I was, yes. Yeah. yes. Was she trying to get off the teachers back then? Uh... <laughs> Looking for that older figure in she, her life. She used to come in with the streets of San Francisco on VHS. <laughs> Look at this, this guy's really hot. This man is fantastic. Look at the dimple he's got there. Favourite foods to eat? What do you enjoy most? I adore oysters. Uh -huh. How important is it with an oyster that it has the, the, the juice still in it? Crucial. And I never eat an oyster unless it's stuck to the shell. When they're released and they're put back in, they could be from a different shell. So you need it... Seriously? You think someone would do that? Well, sometimes they do. They clean the shells, they put really? them in the dishwasher, and then they get the oysters from other shells and stick them in there. What oyster... criminal mastermind would do Absolutely something like that? Absolutely shocking. <laughs> We've taken them, now we put them in the other shells. <laughs> Hold that thought. I've got yeah. a very special treat for you. All right. Yeah? Come with me. Oh, OK. Yeah. Right. You're a Where big fan of oysters, yeah? Yeah. Look what I've got for you. OK. He was acquitted on all charges, remember? Now. And he should be allowed to perform again. <laughs> I hear yeah. you're a fucking good shocker. I'm a hell of a shocker. Huh? Yeah. Show me one. You go in that end. Oh, shit. Here He's is the muscle. The minute you're in there, yeah. that's where it's prized. That's the thin end. So as you go in, yeah. it's brittle, it breaks the shell, and you get all these bits I, of shell I did throughout. 12 like that last weekend at the wrong end. Set at the wrong end. Yeah. <laughs> now, the secret is yeah. release. The muscle. In, twist and pop off. I've got it, I've got it, That's I'm it. in. Good. Um, you've left half the skirt on the top of the shelf. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm not a chef. Go and do some comedy, you cheeky bugger. <laughs> right, there we are, done, OK? OK, good. Little tip, plate, tin yeah. foil. Oh, OK. And you get them there and just sit them in the tin foil and it keeps the oyster up. It doesn't lose its juice. You know what I'd normally do, though, is, is put some crushed ice on a plate. Is that, is that yeah. By the time you've opened fucking three... <laughs> well, at my speed, Second. yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're going to have a shock off. Yeah? OK. We've oh, got... Who can guess the winner of this? Uh, How many are we trying to get through? We're going to get through the whole tree together. Ready? Steady. Steady. Go. Go. Here we go. Twist. Slow down. Oh, wait. In. In. Twist. And twist. Up. Up. <laughs> Keeping all the juice in. <laughs> Where's that gone? In. I'm in. And twist. I'm not popping. Come on, Gordon. Come on, Rob. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come it's on. really close. <laughs> in. Twist. Come on, and in. Come on, Rob. Huh? We've got an obviously. I'm in. I've done it. I'm in. Good man. Good man. Good man. Good man. Good man. In. Push it. I've done the second one. Come on, Rob. You should be able to twist the knife once the point's in and release the muscle. Rob, release the muscle. I've released my muscle. See? I'm come catching on. up. He is catching up. He is catching up. Hold on a minute. Fucking hell, he's in again. Uncle Bryn is coming back. <laughs> Uncle Bryn is coming I've back. I've got five oysters and snow dunder. <laughs> let's go. Oh, look who's let's winning. Go, let's go, let's look go, let's go, let's go. Look who's winning. Two left, two left. Shit. See how easy it is to release the muscle? Oh, my God, look at that! <laughs> <laughs> Last one. <laughs> Come on, Rob! Oh, yeah, with her, with her, with her. <laughs> it's finished! <laughs> one, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Yeah! It's all right. <laughs> Hold on. You pinched one from mine, didn't you? Yeah! That was very good. Thank you. You're very a fucking much. good shucker. You know that. You can shuck. <laughs> you. you can shuck for Wales. The stroganoff was very salty and it overpowered any other flavours that were there. How was the main course? Really salty. Really salty. Yeah. Damn, I'm so sorry. Um, chicken or the veg? Um, no, the veg. I thought it was really, really oh, tasty, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, no, it was. Um, are you paying? Yes, I am paying. And five of you aren't, right? No, I'm not. I'm paying. Yeah. I'm paying. You are paying. Well, it's very generous of you. Salt, it was still very, very Well, I'm so sorry it was salty. Thank, thank, thank you for being so patient. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The stroganoff was very good. The chicken was really soft. Um, you could really taste the smokiness of the paprika. Um, the sauce was very rich. It was um, a really lovely dish. Right, results from course. OK, the amount of guests that paid, yeah, out of 50 is... 
me, Jesus. Jesus. I can't even call it out. 17. Mm. That is the worst we've ever had. No. <laughs> really? Guys, I'm here for perfection, and that is shocking. What do they say? Well, the majority over salty. So, salty. so salty, yeah. Can we come back for dessert? Yeah. Yes. Coming up, after eight weeks in the making, I finally get to neck a bottle of my home brew. It's extraordinary. Next one. My very own beer. And it's time for Janet to say goodbye to David and Elton. Right, it's recipe challenge time. Jessica Hines is taking me on with her macaroni and cheese. Yes? First of all, good to see you. Tell me about macaroni and cheese. Macaroni and cheese start with macaroni. Yes. It's a form of pasta. In yes. case you didn't know that. It's uh -huh. pasta. Thank you. <laughs> it's a type of pasta. Okay. Now, why have you chosen what? macaroni and cheese? Because it's delicious, it's uh -huh. easy to cook, my kids love it. I feel yes. quite confident cooking it. Now you know the blind tasters aren't children today, don't you? This is actually a slightly more adult version. And what makes it an adult version? What well is it's it? got onion in it. Ooh, nice. Onion. I Grated like that onion. Idea. So if you don't yes. like that, you might not like yeah. this. So Jessica's making macaroni and cheese. Of course I'm gonna do macaroni and cheese. This one's gonna be done with um, wonderful. Zero mushrooms, so a bit of a wild mushroom thing going on. Are you going to do any work today, or are you going to say... Listen, this is just, you know, I'm chilling here. I'm just making like, we're just watching you. Hey, macaroni you... cheese is, is, a, is a dish There's that you make when you have lots of children. So normally I'd be going, no, stop it, what? Uh, like come that. here, come here. That's why it's a good recipe. And You're just you... boiling the macaroni cheese there. You grew up in a bit of a sort of hippie household. What kind of things did you eat? Lots of lentils yeah. and yogurt, right? Lentils and yogurt. My mum used to make bread. Well, you're yeah. not a vegetarian, are you? I was a vegetarian after my son was born. I just went off eating meat, actually. Oh, really? Welcome um, back. And, uh, yeah, no, I got pregnant with my, with my daughter. Yeah. And, and, and I didn't even know I was pregnant. I was two weeks pregnant, and I was at a barbecue, and there was a big plate of spare ribs. And I would have eaten the person yeah. standing in front of the spare ribs, if that's what it took to get to them. I didn't know I was pregnant at the time. Amazing. And then was, when, I, when I saw the spare ribs, yeah. my intense desire for the spare ribs made me think, oh, I'm pregnant, I must be pregnant. How extraordinary, yeah. amazing. Yeah. Macaroni's half cooked, and then I'm just going to glaze the pan, touch the white wine, and start making a really nice white wine cream sauce. My white sauce is, is basically like anybody else's white sauce, which right. is just melt the butter, put the flour in, yep. stir it up, and then I add, for this, not too much, but just a couple of pinches of jerk seasoning, oh. which is kind of Caribbean uh -huh. seasoning. No flour in my white sauce, just cream, shallots, and thyme and girolles. Wow. Bring it up to the boil, and then I'm going to thicken it with this amazing cheese. I'm using Stitcherton cheese, which is quite sort of rich, um, very um, slightly salty, but mm. absolutely delicious. Perfect for macaroni and cheese. So, how did you start off in comedy? How did you get into it? Well, I, um, I, I was always being picked for comic roles at school. At like, school. I, I, we had a couple of teachers. They used to write us these little sort of um, plays. So I just kind of thought, oh, I can, maybe I can do this. There's a lot less female comedians than there are male comedians. Yes. Why is that? I think it's more important huh? for them to think they're funny. So. Yeah, which is weird, yeah. no? Yeah. I think it's because men just think they're funny, Jess. You know that? That's true, too. Yeah, in terms of that level of arrogance. Maybe women aren't as funny as men. I don't think that. I know, I'm wondering. No, I don't th no, maybe I... that's why. No. OK, so cream has reduced down now to this really nice mushroom creamy sauce. Season it with chives and then Egg yolks in. That will help it sort of glaze in the oven as it bakes. Parmesan cheese. Then we're going to add the macaroni back in to the cream, bake, and then win. I've just made a white sauce, nice and slowly, and now I'm um, grating red onion. So the onion's going raw. <laughs> You can sweat the onion off very quickly. No, I don't want to sweat it. Oh, you're going to it put sweats it... when it cooks, and that's the point. The point is, you want a little bit of the onion. Right. You don't want onion. Oh, onion. And then okay. finally, the rest of the macaroni in. Now, grated cheese on the top. That's it. Finito. I'm going to win. Right. So they both go in the oven now. Top of Where bottom. do I put it? At the top. The bottom. Where would you like to go? I would like it to go there. Okay. No, actually, where are you going to put yours? Oh, God. I'm just asking. Where are you going to put All yours? All the heat's coming out. You, ladies first. You go first. Where are you putting oh, yours? Shit. Okay, I want to put mine there top. too. Can they both go there? <laughs> of course they can. Okay. Of course they can. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a fool. <laughs> Good luck. You are so competitive. You know that, <laughs> okay. huh? Right. It's time to bottle my special F-word beer. 
two months ago, I set off on a mission to find and brew a beer that would complement Janice Street Porter's veal. It's a very mellow, creamy, rich beer. That is delicious. That I could then brew in my own back garden. Super sweet. Great. That is incredible. You know, we've got some nice hops, and we'll get a lovely, smooth, creamy yeah. flavour to the beer. That's like a witch's potion when you stir it A round. witch's potion? Excuse me. Hey, this is your hey. dad's very own beer. Let's hope this fucking works. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Nine days later, the brew was ready to be transferred into an oak bourbon barrel, where it spent several weeks absorbing the barrel's unique caramel flavour. The barrel, this is where all the flavour comes from. So we're going to put the beer in here for 30 days, uh -huh. and it's going to transform it, add a lot of oak character, yep. a bit of vanilla. We just need to pump it into the barrel now. Yep. So I've brought these staves just to show you. This is a part of an oak barrel. Right. Right. It's been used for bourbon. Yeah. Before they fill it with bourbon, they char it, they fire the inside. Incredible. And that's why you've got this black coloration. It's charcoal. Surely it would make the beer darker, though. No, 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 it doesn't make the beer darker. It actually takes a bit of colour out. And you can see this layer here is where the bourbon has previously soaked into. And it's changed the flavour of the wood in there. So that now, when our beer's going in here, yep. that flavour that's in there comes leaching out and goes into the beer. And that's where we get the sort of vanilla, the creamy character yeah. of this beer. Ah, uh, to get it all. Canny Scottish trick there, tip the bow. Come on, <laughs> get it all. <laughs> <laughs> Only Scotland can get that one in. <laughs> right down to the last Come minute on, of form. Come on, you <laughs> bastard. <laughs> oh, Jesus I think God. that'll do us. The smell is amazing. It's sort of biscuity, creamy flavour. Unbelievable. I mean, it's just getting better and better and better. This is going to really change things. Seriously. Really transform it. There we go. Two months later, the beer is ready to be bottled and drunk. A house proud Tana has had to put up with a lot over the years and has drawn the line at me building a beer bottling plant in the garage. Oh, bloody hell! So Dougal and I wait out a view of my house to meet a man with a mobile bottling solution. Fuck so me. this guy. Yeah. It's got oh. a bottling line on the back of this lorry. So this thing's mobile, travels around the country, bottling beer. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, my God. I can spot the barrel. Bloody hell. This mobile bottling unit will cool and filter the beer, removing any remaining yeast and then carbonating it to give it a light fizz. My first ever bottle, homemade brew. It needs to be perfect. It's too late to start over. It's fucking delicious. Yeah. Brew my beer in the whiskey-soaked oak barrel has really paid off. It's extraordinary. Next one. My very own beer. Whee! The flavour will work brilliantly with Janet's veal. So the exciting thing now will be coming up with a veal dish that can match that. You've got something to base it uh, on that. Yeah, absolutely. Not just a sort of flavour, absolutely. Oh, Jesus, look. Okay, that's definitely overkill. Ooh. I feel like I'm fucking Willy Wonka. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I think we've got a unique homemade bottled beer there, don't you? Yeah, I'm looking um, forward to it. Something that I'm very happy with. I can't wait to see the feedback in the dining room. Sure. Ah, beautiful. What a process. Um, can't wait to taste it alongside the veal. Now, one more job, the labels. I think I'll get the kids involved with that. Here it is. Look at that. That is our very own, yes, home brewed, homemade beer. What does it say, Jack? A traditional ale aged in, in a whiskey barrel for a smoother finish. Brewed in the Ramsey Family Garden, London 2008. How cool yes, is that? Yes, how cool is that? Try and keep them all nice and straight, OK? Jack, that's very good. Nice. Daddy, this one, OK? Shall we? Yeah. Oh, do... <laughs> Shall we? <laughs> Madam. Oh, it's personal touch, turn it around. Madam. Yeah, that is terrible. Uh, yeah, we've got air bubbles in there as well. Never mind. Dear, oh dear, well, at least they're all individual, aren't they? Uh, Daddy, it doesn't really matter. Look at that. Beautiful. Put your tongue out. Put your tongue out. Uh, okay, enough. Enough. Uh, no. Tell me. They'll be back out of rehab by 12. Yay! <laughs> the kids approve. But what will the diners think when I serve my beer with Janet's veal? I'll find out in two weeks' time. Make sure your cream cheese is soft before you start adding your cream. Yeah, yeah. No. Otherwise, it'll be a nightmare to mix. Sugar in and another pan on there, Sean, and start your caramel, yes? Right, time for dessert. Vanilla cheesecake with berry compote. A really nice, exciting, quick cheesecake served with a strawberry and blueberry compote. Biscuits. Blitz, hot pan, sugar. 
We're going to form a really nice light golden caramel. Butter. As the butter dissolves, put in your biscuits. Coat the biscuits in the caramel. They become really nice and crunchy. Cool. Very compote. Hot pan, sugar, strawberries, blueberries. And look what's happening now. We've got that really nice caramel texture. Deglaze the pan with this little baby, a creme de cassis, giving it a really nice dark texture. Cool. Cheesecake. Cream cheese in. Vanilla. Ice and sugar. To sweeten up the cream cheese. Mix. Lemon. Cream. Whisk. I'm going to fold the cream into the cream cheese. Fill. Biscuit crumbs. To release the cutter, heat round the outside of the ring. Blowtorch. Very gently. Compote. Touch of mint. That has to be the perfect, quick, delicious vanilla cheesecake. Vanilla cheesecake with berry compote. Done. OK, careful for those plates don't get too hot. Biggins. Yes, sir. For me, let's take this really serious, yeah? Yes. You end on a high, yeah? And we yes. don't look fucking stupid, yes? OK, sir. Thank you. Well done, Sean. Change pace with me, the other end. Good. With the, with the topping. Okay. Make sure those rings are full, yes? Yes, sir. Otherwise, you take off the cutters, they look shit. Neil, fill your ring up. Uh, Biggins? Yes, sir. You can see why I take this seriously. This is my I career, know. yes? I know, yeah, I so, take it very seriously. Yeah, I want to fucking end on a high, yes? Careful, because I've got the I've got the weapon here. Just be careful. Yeah, you be careful and concentrate. I'm fucking concentrate if you don't even need well, me. Well, concentrate alone. harder. Right, berries on. OK, guys, nice and smart, yes? Simple dessert, simple presentation. We yeah, can't fuck this up. Point here, yeah. chef. Biggins, mint in and send. Yeah. Absolutely spotless. And send, right, Josie, please. Go. No, we've got to clean the plate first. <laughs> well, we can do this. Let's get all 50. <laughs> How long have you been married? Since 2006. How long have you been together as a couple? How long? 14 years. Uh, and in 14 years, what has he taken serious? Nothing. He just can't like, take anything seriously. Unreal. Sean, lovely. Absolutely spot on. Help over here, Mint. And wipe the plates, please. Chris, good to see you're busy. Fuck well, me. I have too many cooks for the broth. That's chef. right, yes. Yeah. Meanwhile, Chris is busting his ass. <laughs> Unfucking real. Go. Well done. Except Biggins. Huh? Well done, right. gang. Right, back to Dennis Street Porter, and trust me, this one is not for the squeamish. David and Elton, Janet's two veal calves, are about to be slaughtered. But Janet's not sure she can bear to see them killed. I just don't want to watch you shooting them. Or slit their throat, unfortunately. I just don't think I could. Do you ever have farmers who can't face watching it at all? No. David's time's up first, and as he's led into the stunning box, Janet has a change of heart and decides she wants to stay with him to the end. She's been to abattoirs before, but never to see the slaughter of animals she's reared personally. The slaughter of cattle in the UK is governed by strict guidelines and can only be carried out by licensed slaughtermen like Martin McIntyre. He'll ensure the animals have caused minimal stress and make the kill as quick as possible. OK. Yeah, fine. The captive bolt renders David heavily stunned. From this point, he won't feel anything. The blood's drained from the body before they process the carcass. You OK? The stunning was fine. The blood flitting, I could do without. If it starts to twitch, it's just nerves. Now it's time for Janet's second calf, Elton. Now the calves are gutted, the parts of the calves that can be eaten are separated from those that can't. Do you want them? What? 
Bollocks. Testicles. No, it's okay. Yeah, it's only got one knacker. Oh, which one only have one knacker? Elton. David. David only have one ball? Yeah. I believe it. Oh, that's disgusting. The lungs. Oh. Windpipe. Very healthy. Obviously, it wasn't a smoker. Janet's time as a farmer is over, and it's time for the veal to be prepared. The cars will be hung for up to 10 days to improve the flavour, before Dave is enjoyed by Janet's friends in North Yorkshire and Elton's delivered to the F-word restaurant. <laughs> Janet, how are you, my darling? Fine, thank you. You're looking very countryfied. Did you knit that? No, I fucking didn't miss oh, it all. Oh, no. OK. It's a designer item. <laughs> <laughs> a bit like your hair. So, uh, Jesus Christ. Now, Elton and Davis are officially... They're dead. Go on. They're slaughtered. And I saw, before yeah. I went to the slaughterhouse, yes. I didn't think that I could even go no. in the building. What helped you change your mind? I was persuaded by the slaughterhouse itself oh, because really? it's a very small uh, family business. It's yeah. in the middle of the Yorkshire nice. Dales. And quite honestly, if animals are going to be slaughtered, that's the way to do yeah, it. Personal. And it was service. personal, and it seemed yeah. to be part of the environment. Did you have any second thoughts about not sending them and actually pulling one back and saying, "Hold on, get out"? No, there. because Gordon, they were never pets. They right. were always reared to but make a point about sure. feel. Look at the size of them, though. The carcasses uh, look magnificent. Yes. They look really good. Quality. Then, the animal inspector said they were top quality meat. It's made me yep. want all the meat that I eat to yep. have had a decent life. And I just don't know how anyone watching this programme uh -huh. can, quite frankly, go and buy cheap, nasty meat. You yep. just like, you think, you know, you owe it to yourself and you owe it to animals yep. to make sure that you know where that meat came from yep. and how it was real. One what? last thing, just yeah? a little present from me, something to sort of remember them by. Look, just for you. For your kitchen wall above the arga. Oh, that's yes. lovely. Is that nice? Yeah. And good luck. And you notice the dribble. That... <laughs> that's what I will remember. That's David. Buckets of dribble. And knit me a jumper sometime when you've got time. Coming up, I find out if I'm still the big cheese in the macaroni recipe challenge. Well, they did like both. Okay, go on. Right, time for the blind tasters to taste both macaroni and cheeses. OK, nice, generous portion. Nice, generous yeah. portion, OK. Bearing in mind, they are quite fussy. Are you happy with yours, by the way? Yeah, I'm very, very happy yeah. with it. Oh, there we okay. go. Right. I like this bit. It's where it gets really exciting. Mm. Which one would you choose? Which one Just would I... visually. M macaroni cheese, there. That's macaroni cheese. That... I don't know what that is. Right, Jose. Come back with the right <laughs> result, yes? If you want a job next week. <laughs> Good luck. Yes? Good luck. You're going to need it. <laughs> Hello. So, here we have our first. And the second dish. Lovely. Enjoy. Quite salty. The, the cheese is quite strong. It's got quite a strong flavour yeah. that comes through. I quite like the, the fact that the pasta's not, not too overdone. This is still quite, quite firm. Really enjoying that. It looks great, this one. Yeah. I really like the mushrooms in there. It adds quite a strong flavour. And the cheese is different. I think yeah. it's a gorgonzola or something blue. OK, right, here we go. Right, Jose, <laughs> come in. Gordon, was it the Jess? raw onion or was it the wild mushroom? Well, they did like both. They like both? Oh, dear, I don't like me tell me that. OK, come on. Gordon won. Yes! I honestly thought yours was going to win. The jerk seasoning and the white sauce. It's, it's because I forgot the, the, onion. the ketchup garnish. Yours was delicious. Come on, the kids are going to love it. <laughs> it's fine, it's uh, fine. And I think it's ten times better than Delia's. Thanks a lot. Thank okay. you. It's been a pleasure having Thank you in the you. kitchen, yes? It's been a pleasure being here. Thank you. Thanks for the tip. Thank you. Chicken stock cooking the macaroni. Yes. Yes! Bye. <laughs> Cheesecake was fabulous. It was a really good combination of sort of crunchy biscuit base. Um, the actual cheesecake bit was really nice and light and creamy with subtle sort of vanilla through it. And um, the fact that this fruit was still quite warm it really made it superb. Oh dear. Thank what you. happened? The fruit compote was gorgeous. Yes. The, um, the actual cheesecake, it was almost like a um, poorly flavoured panna cotta. It wasn't, it didn't have that, that cheese taste to it. Poorly flavoured panna cotta. Mm. Taste it, go on. You must be with me on that. Yeah, it needs more ice and sugar in there. Yeah. Yes, you're definitely not paying for it. Right, Jose, let's go. Results, please. Now, 
Let's see how you did. The number of customers are going to pay for dessert. <sighs> 32 out of 50. 18 didn't pay. Well, tell me. Not Own up. <laughs> tell me. <laughs> did you tell like? Me. There's a lot of them out there. Why, no. Josie, why? Not sweet enough. No, not sweet enough. Not sweet enough. Mean. That was the main... Not sweet enough. Yeah. Cheesecake not should sweet be sweet. Enough. Did you keep on tasting it? Yeah. Before yes. it went in the cutter? Yeah, it was delicious. That's a grand total of 89 out of 150. That is shit. Yeah. Neil. Yeah, they will be coming by. <laughs> Biggins. Well... Don't say anything, just fuck off out of <laughs> my kitchen. Get out! Out! All the way out! 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 No, don't clap! They were terrible! <laughs>